Good morning, my little nerds. So, me and my very long spoon, yes, I have very long spoons, are going to sip the tea while we spill the tea on skincare myths. And honestly, why are we sipping and spilling the tea? Because three of these upcoming videos are gonna be in part sponsored by Peak. And I say this with full honesty, I hardly ever do any sponsorships. It is very rare that I decide to sponsor with any brand, but Peak Tea was kind of a no-brainer out of left field because I carry them already in my office. So I've already subscribed to their philosophy and I actually enjoy them. And very frankly, I have been quitting coffee completely. It was a bad habit I picked up in 2020 and I've switched over to their green tea matcha, which coincidentally is the one they have given me for these sponsorships. So I just thought it was very serendipitous. And so peak tea, let's spill the tea and start. Starting with myth number one percentages of ingredients first of all first of all more is not better higher is not necessarily stronger and is not necessarily best for your skin we have seen this at length for example with niacinamide where you have brands touting 20 percent niacinamide but in fact the sweet spot is three to five percent but there are some ingredients where the percentage matters and some of those ingredients include retinol, as well as, for example, hydroquinone. I think you need to know the ballpark of what you're getting so that you can gauge whether or not you can tolerate a product and if it's right for you. But even with retinol, percentages can be misleading. And this is where complexes come in. So I'm going to show you guys two brands. And upon first impressions, you'll see these two brands and think, Retinol 0.3% versus retinol 1.7%. Which one's better? Or 1.5%, sorry. You'll think this guy is probably weaker than this one. But no, 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 mes amis. This one is a, repeat after me, complex. A complex is not the same thing as a percentage of an ingredient. If we look upon closer inspection, we see over here that it is not actually 1.5% retinol. It is 0.3% retinol married to something that they call a retinol optimizer as well as a retinol soother in order to create a 1.5% complex. So next time you're walking down Target, Dwayne Reed, Walgreens, Sephora, Ulta, you name it, Space NK, Walmart, all of them, make sure you're not getting misled by the numbers that you see on a box because they can mean very different things. Myth numero deux. I will lose my S-H-I-T if I hear another brand or person tout their high horse that they are chemical free. Every effing thing in this world is a chemical. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let us show you guys an example. Starting with Walgreens. Actually, we'll just limit it to Walgreens because I don't know if my, my blood pressure could handle this particular falsity that gets keeps getting perpetuated. By the way, guys, I am wearing a uh, hydrocolloid patch. I had a stressful few days and this baby popped out. So say hello to my little friend. Um, but Walgreens cleansing spray. Now this guy appears to be extremely benign. Like why is she gonna go after this guy? He, he's done nothing wrong and he's sitting there in the corner, literally on the most bottom shelf that is away from your eyesight. But this guy caught my eye because most recently I have been obsessed with hypochlorous acid. There are various brands on the market. You can actually make it yourself if you really want to. But Tower 28 is one that I carry in office. Why? Because I spray it all over my face throughout the day. Actually, I even spray it inside my mask before I put it on um, throughout the day in order to kill any bacteria or build up. So when I was looking for a dupe, because this can be a little bit pricey, I went into Walgreens and I discovered my little friend that I thought I was going to love until I saw chemical free, <laughs> chemical free, hypochlorous acid is a chemical. H-O-C-L is made up of H-O plus C-L. It is a full on chemical. So things like this kill my 
soul. And if anybody tries to tell me, I'm trying to use things with less chemicals, anything you're gonna put on your face is a chemical. So we basically have now beat that horse to death. Please wipe it out of your heads. Even miracle dust, angel's dust, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want, even miracle dust or like the dust from a fairy is probably made up of chemicals, okay? Everything is a chemical. Water, hypochlorous acid, and fairy dust. They're all chemicals. So get over yourself. If you're really that concerned, then you need to be going into a dark hole somewhere without getting exposed to even oxygen because last I checked, oxygen is also a chemical. But then you wouldn't be here to be worried about chemicals if you didn't have access to that. Moving on. <laughs> I'm take a little break so I can recenter myself with my green tea matcha. This is the actual part of the video that is being sponsored. Um, Peak tea, I want to show it to you guys and why I picked it honestly for my office. I truly did because they come in these sachets that I felt were cleaner for patients in an office. I was going to basically go nuts if I saw tea bags everywhere. And I love these because they were sachets. Now I'm using a knife so I don't use my teeth and weird you guys out, but it comes as a powder form. And I will show you guys in my little beaker flask just like this. And you can mix this with water, um, milk, half and half, dairy, dairy-free creamer, whatever it is you want. I actually mixed it with some half and half that I froth up to create a green tea matcha latte. It is loaded in antioxidants and antioxidants help fight free radicals. Now, free radical damage is what is induced in times of stress on our bodies. And free radicals can contribute to inflammation. There's actually been a study in 2016 by the British Journal of Nutrition, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm reading it right here, that found that foods high in antioxidants like green tea can actually help reduce markers of inflammation in the body because inflammation can contribute to overall unwellness, an antioxidant-rich diet is just one tool that may help support vitality as well as healthy aging. Now, the other cool thing about this guy is that it is made via cold extraction technology and therefore it is a powder. And as such, a powder is not formulated with anything that is liquid and so it doesn't need any preservatives. However, preservatives are needed when things are liquid like skincare. So moving on to myth number three. Everyone loves to hate on parabens because it's an easy one that people can get scared of without understanding the facts. I actually have a full video um, a few months ago that I did on parabens debunking this myth. So scroll back and find it if you are more interested. But in a nutshell, I'm going to sum it up. Parabens came on the market in the 1950s to prolong shelf life of products and to ensure that bacteria and mold don't overtake our products and therefore don't get applied on our faces and our bodies. It was there to protect us. Then, all of a sudden, there was a guy who wrote in the Journal of Applied Toxicology in 2004, I believe, um, that parabens caused breast cancer. And then somebody took that sentence and put it on a blog, and that blog got spread around, and that is how misinformation spreads like wildfire. Because why is this misinformation? In the study, he found parabens in breast cancer tissue. But what he failed to do was look at normal breast tissue to see if parabens were present in normal breast tissue, which you would think was the next logical thing to do. Because last I checked, correlation does not imply causation. Just because I ate ice cream on a cold day doesn't mean the day is cold because I ate ice cream. Okay, I think you guys got it. But basically, that is sort of the backstory behind parabens. And then brands took it and ran without double checking the facts, which happens all the time. And then this became a whole movement based on something wrong. Um, the FDA though, and I'm gonna read my notes, has repeatedly looked at the safety and has reported the following information on their website, and I'll print it below, that parabens are indeed safe. The cosmetic ingredient review actually reviewed the safety of methylparaben, butylparaben, propylparaben in 1984, and they concluded that they were safe for use in cosmetic products up to 25%. That was basically like 20 some years before that paper in toxicology came out. But then on November 14th, 2003, 
They began the process, the CIR, Cosmetic Ingredient Review, to reopen the safety assessments of all of these three parabens, including ethyl paraben, a fourth one, in order to offer interested parties an opportunity to submit new data for consideration. You want to sing for me? One second. Okay. okay. We'll have a little singing break. You make me In September 2005, the CIR decided then to reopen the safety assessment to request exposure estimates and a risk assessment for cosmetic use. In December 2005, after considering the margins of safety for exposure to women and infants, the panel determined that there was no need to change its original conclusion. And after three investigations, the FDA have concluded that parabens are completely safe. Let me save my son from holding these scissors. Thank you very much. So parabens, I rest my case, you are completely safe. Okay, but I will say this, smaller brands starting on the market today face a huge challenge of including parabens or not. While I, for example, am a huge proponent for parabens, am I gonna include them in my skincare line? I'm caught between a rock and a hard place because I'm only one person fighting this misinformation. And so as a small brand, I will not have parabens in my products because I have too many people to have to educate and enlighten in order for them to change their opinion on the matter. Yeah, so I was saying, brands like myself who are smaller brands, unfortunately, it's too big of a machine to fight. And so do you really want to die on the parabens hill as a small brand when you don't have the financial backing to fight all this misinformation? And so I think it's now becoming a self-perpetuated cycle. And I think it's on smaller brands not to tout the fact that they're paraben free so that at least that narrative begins to change so that larger brands will stop touting paraben free and therefore eventually they can be reintroduced for safer and better products. That's my spiel with my son's singing. Number five, let us talk about scent and <laughs> not that scent. A lot of products on the market claim to be fragrance free, but a lot of products on the market also claim to be unscented. Now, unscented and fragrance-free are two very, very different things. And we have to kind of dive in on this, shall we? So here we have two pretty identical looking soap bars, Dove as well as Beauty 360, both geared towards sensitive skin. You look at these and you think, oh, pretty equal. I'll take this one, it's cheaper. This one claims to be unscented. This one claims to be fragrance free. What's the difference? This is the one you actually want to use, not this one, if you truly have a fragrance allergy. Because unscented products are not equal to fragrance free. It just means that their scent is masked. And so they might have fragrances that are currently being covered up. So this is where unfortunately you have to be a smarter consumer. And I think brands kind of play around on these claims um, overlooking consumers intelligence but this is a very clear case in point where you are being misled as the consumer unscented is not fragrance free so make sure next time you're looking for something without a scent something that is truly fragrance free that it is basically marketed as fragrance free and not unscented moving on to fragrance fragrance is another myth that has been perpetuated, I'd say more so in recent years, like in the past two years since the explosion of TikTok, as being the devil incarnate. And my nails happen to be red for this little action. Um, it's not the devil. Fragrance is absolutely not the devil at all. And I am a dermatologist and a practicing dermatologist at that, who happens to also be board certified, who is here to tell you that fragrance is not the devil. If you are a normal human being who lives a normal life, who has no major skin issues, go enjoy that aromatherapy that you get with a fragrance full body wash or face wash or lotion or cream or whatever it is that you love. Fragrance is the devil for people who have sensitive skin or who are prone to eczema or irritations. They have to approach cautiously. But if you are not that person, then live your life without fear until the day you have to worry because part of life is this sense and you cannot take that out of your routine, especially if it's part of your well-being routine and your self-care routine and it makes you feel better about life because life these days is scary enough and fragrances don't have to freak you out too. Sis, 
mineral oil, and my BFF, Vaseline. This guy? Is not to be feared at all. I love her or him for anybody who is dehydrated, becoming a shriveled prune, and needs to lock that moisture in. It is probably one of the best products out there to help minimize trans epidermal water loss as an amazing occlusive. So for any guy, girl, or anything in between that is losing a lot of hydration on the surface of their skin, this one is for you. Especially if you're eczema prone, especially if you have sensitive skin, especially if you are so scared of fragrances. Because mineral oil is definitely the best occlusive on the market. Now it's been around for over a hundred years. So now not everything new is great, but everything great was once new. And I think the track record of this person speaks for itself. And why then has it all of a sudden gotten a lot of heat? Because like I said, one angry shouter can cause a ripple effect of misinformation being spread. And it is an easy target. It's an easy punching bag. Why? Because it is derived from petrolatum. So then you're going to hear, it's from crude oil. You're putting carcinogenic compounds on your face. But it's a byproduct of refined crude oil. Mineral cosmetic grade, cosmetic grade mineral oil is very different than industrial grade mineral oil. It's not like I can go to the tank, get some petrol, petroleum, whatever it's called. I can't even say the word gas, petrolatum, petroleum, and just make petrolatum out of it and slather it on my face. It's just not happening that way, nor would I ever want to do that. Cosmetic grade mineral oil actually goes through a very lengthy process and it is extremely refined, saturated hydrocarbons that are the byproduct of crude oil. And this very refined, highly saturated byproduct is extremely pure and inert. Unlike the polycyclic compounds that are carcinogenic of crude oil. So, I would not worry so much about mineral oil whatsoever. And it has saved the quality of life of so many of my patients who are suffering from broken skin barriers, perpetual itch, perpetual irritations, and just needed to have a restart in their skincare routine. So it might save your quality of life and your life too. Your life might be a stretch, but your quality of life for sure. So I wouldn't be so scared about it. Also, it is not comedogenic. So do not be scared. You're not going to break out from it. And number three, for all of those who are like, well, I'd rather stick to a plant-based product. There's nothing wrong with plant-based. I actually love a lot of plant-based products like Arnica. J'adore. But plant-based oils tend to have essential oils in them as well. And they tend to be more irritants. So for somebody who has an irritated skin barrier to begin with, plant-based oils are probably not going to be the best thing for you because you might actually develop more sensitivities towards them as well. Hydroquinone, number seven. Hydroquinone is the gold standard when it comes to evening out skin tone, especially melasma. But this one has gotten beat up by that three-letter group because of unsubstantiated fears around hydroquinone causing, I believe it is, renal cancer, kidney cancer, and being carcinogenic. <clears throat> the studies were performed on rats and the rats were <clears throat> basically injected with hydroquinone to have systemic hydroquinone at crazy high doses in their bodies. When you're using hydroquinone, if you have melasma, it is being applied topically. And this is less than 3% of your body's surface area. Hydroquinone should not be feared, especially if you have melasma that is affecting your quality of life. Without further ado, that is today's video on busting skin myths. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. One more. Thank you, Peak, for sponsoring part of this video. Oh.